Hi, this is Robert, and in this video, I'm going to talk a few minutes to you about what I consider a car having a heart attack. And what I have right here is called a timing belt. If you, As you can see, this belt has ridges on it, kind of like a lot of belts on a car does, especially the ones that wrap around your cams and your uh, crankshaft. And this particular belt came out of a Volvo 850 uh, turbocharged. And these belts have time change intervals because Volvo wants you to change them before they break. This belt here will wrap around the intake cam, the exhaust cam, the water pump, the crankshaft, and it will also go around two pulleys. One pulley is an idler pulley. The other pulley is a tensioner pulley that keeps the proper tension on the belt so that it doesn't jump teeth. Now, there are a couple of different types of motors in cars. Some have timing belts and some have timing chains. I have very rarely heard of a car with a timing chains chain breaking because normally those chains will last beyond 500,000 miles and very few people keep cars on the road that long. Now on the other hand, timing belts will last as long as the manufacturer suggests usually and they will also normally I would guess last 20 percent longer as long as the the time interval is not exceeded. For instance, in the Volvo 850 they say change the belt every 70,000 miles or seven years. Well, if you put 70,000 miles on your car in three years, this belt might last to 80,000, 90. I've heard of some even lasting longer than that. The problem with it is, once it breaks, it does damage to the motor, major damage to the cam top section head of the car. So, most people I've talked to that let one of these belts break they experience about a $2,800 repair job. Well, if you buy an older car and this belt breaks, the cost of the repair may exceed the value of the car. So you've just lost a car. I've, I've heard of it done several times. So this belt needs to be changed. One, if you exceed the mileage. Two, if you exceed the date. And three, if you have no idea if it's ever been changed. Now, as I said, this belt will wrap around the intake cam and the, and the exhaust cam if you have a car with a double overhead cam, intake cam, exhaust cam. It will also wrap around the crank. Now, if you ever look in that compartment, normally has a cover on it. Mine, you can pull one bolt out and see this belt. And the belt itself looks like any of the teeth were chipped or missing or is frayed at all man don't even start that car have that car towed somewhere to have that belt replaced on the other hand if you're like me you open up there and you look at it you have a tendency to look at the ridged part of the belt I know you won't be able to see it but the ridged part on this belt looks practically new however the smooth side of the belt that rolls along those rollers that you can never see. If you look closely, this belt has ages and it has cracks on the back side. Now, of course, this belt was replaced. I had about 72 to 74,000 miles on it. And it had been replaced about six years ago. So I wasn't in fear of this belt breaking. However, I wasn't going to let it go much longer because I didn't want it to break. Now in that path of that timing belt is what they call an idler roller. Uh, some mechanics recommend you replace everything in the path of the timing belt since the belt's off. Now on my car that's about a $300 labor to have the belt removed and replaced. However, if you have another part like an idler roller that's worn, you want to replace that too. Well, 
of if unless you've heard this making a lot of noise with the engine running, you have no idea if these parts are uh, worn where they need replaced. So most mechanics will try to talk you into replacing these parts. It may bump your your uh, labor up another hundred bucks, but you add a few parts that may add another two three hundred bucks in parts. So you turn a four hundred dollar job into an eight hundred dollar job, or if you're at the dealer. You can almost double that. You'll add fifty percent on that. So you turn a, a six hundred dollar job into a into a nine hundred dollar job or even more. Now, when I just recently replaced my belt and I cut it to get it off, it did not break. I took and I spun my rollers to see if I felt my rollers needed to be replaced. Now when I spun my idler, it made noise. When I can hear the noise, that tells me that the grease inside the bearing, it's a sealed unit, is practically worn away. And now the bearings are making noise, kind of like a roller skate would on an on a inexpensive roller skate. I'll do it one more time. Maybe you can hear it. So if this roller spins and you can hear it, I would definitely replace it. Because the chances of this roller lasting another 70,000 miles is slim to none. So, if I had to let this stay on the car, maybe 10,000 miles down the road, 15,000 miles down the road, or 30,000 miles down the road, this would have gotten to where it was no more grease in there, the bearings could seize. And if the bearing seize and that belt is wrapped around here, going 1,000 revolutions per minute to 2,000 revolutions per minute, it could cause this bearing to come apart, cause my timing to jump, and destroy the head on my car. So you don't want that. Now, another part of this path is the tensioner roller. This roller sits on a pivot with this bolt right here. And there is what's called a tensioner, a hydraulic part that pushes on this to keep the slack out of the belt. It has a roller too. So I spun this roller on my car, it was silent, and when I spun it, it didn't even turn around an extra revolution or two. So it was tight, and if you hear this one, it's silent. And I wish I'd have put some uh, white paint on there, so when I spun it, you can see that it barely spun around a full revolution. When I had that idler and I spun it, it spun around three or four times. So this was tight, it was smooth, my guess is it'll last another 70,000 miles. Now you can take and replace this part, the tensioner, the belt, the idler, and on my car the water pump every single time. You'll change this if you're dealing with a dealer, they may charge you $1,200. If you're dealing with an independent shop, that may cost you $800, but that's insurance that you're not going to have to worry about this for seven years or 70,000 miles, whichever comes first. Now some cars, their timing belt are supposed to be replaced every 100,000 miles. Now I don't know of any that are supposed to be replaced longer than 100,000, and there are some that should be replaced every 50,000 miles. Whatever the interval is, you want to stick to it, because you don't want this timing belt to break if you have an interference motor because it will destroy the head. Now if you do not have an interference motor this timing belt breaks. Nine out of ten times it will not do damage to the car. It will cause, cause the car to stall out. The car won't start. You tow it to the shop. They'll find the timing belt broke and they'll fix it for you. A few hundred bucks. Well if you have an interference motor I promise you you have a one in one hundred chance that this belt breaking doesn't do damage. And if it does break and it doesn't do damage, then you try to start the car. You trying to start it could cause it to do damage. Mostly to the head, it'll bend valves, break valves, and sometimes when the valves collide with the pistons, it'll actually destroy pistons too. So, whenever you buy a used car, you need to find out before you do much of anything else. One, does this car have an interference engine, an interference engine with a timing belt? If it has a timing belt, 
you need to try to figure out when that belt was replaced. Now, most mechanics will get a sticker that comes with the belt. They'll stick that sticker in the engine compartment somewhere, in the owner's manual, somewhere where you can see that they have replaced that timing belt. They'll write the mileage and sometimes the date. If you can't verify when that was done, by all means, either don't buy the car or get that belt replaced as soon as you can. You do not want this to happen. I, I had a dear friend of mine. He purchased a car. It was a Mitsubishi Eclipse. I said, hey, I just purchased my car. I'm going to get this timing belt replaced as soon as I can. He was like, timing belt? What's that? I said, well, you need to figure out if you have one and you need to get it changed if you don't know when it was changed last. Well, two months later, he had a timing belt and it broke, destroyed the head. He took the car to the shop. They put a new belt on. Less than two months later, it broke another belt, destroyed another head. My guess is they didn't replace one of these rollers or that tensioner that had tension on it. And it was an 18-year-old car. They put another head on it, put another belt on it. Maybe replaced a roller or something like that. A few months down the road, uh, probably I think about 18 months down the road, threw another timing belt, destroyed another head. He put another head on the car. Each time he put a belt and head on his car, it exceeded the value of the car. This time, when he had the head replaced, he had another mechanic look at it, and another mechanic said the tensioner had never been replaced. So, if you have a tensioner in there, you need to make sure that's been replaced as well. So, if you have no idea if the belt's ever been replaced, have it done, and on your first try, you may want to tell them to replace everything in the path, and then what I normally say as a rule of thumb is, every other change only replace the belt unless you hear one of these rollers horn. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and post them here on the video. I hope this helped you understand a little bit about timing belts.